kicking things off in the first round. We both pull guard, and I'm going to pull out my best, shiniest, brightest move right out of the gates, the deep half guard to the back attack. I swing his leg out here, pop my head to the other side, and I'm trying to get behind my opponent and start to climb up until I can get the seatbelt and hooks. That lapel control is going to prevent him from just spinning back into me. I get my hook set, but he turns away, and I have to just take the top position, score on the two points. So now I have a two-point lead, two to zero, and I'm up trying to pass his guard. See how I avoided going into his close guard there? I stood right up. I attempted a leg drag pass. And once I'm established on top here, you'll mainly see what my passing game consisted of at Blue Belt. I had a good ability to just get chest to chest and knee slice pass. But other than that, I had kind of a lame leg drag. I had some weak Toriando attempts. And I really have no ability to break grips, as I'm watching here. I should really be trying to break that collar grip. But instead, I'm trying to force the half guard, stuff one of his legs in between my legs. So then that'll give me the ability to try to get close to him so I can get that chest to chest knee slice going. See how he's got the grip on my pants and on the collar. He's able to off balance me here and kind of make me move around. He tried to go single leg X, but I start moving to my right to kind of get away from it. Still trying to always think about my balance. I'll just freeze it for a sec so you can see he gets the foot on the hip, but I quickly push it off and you can see how I'm going to start moving to my right. All I'm trying to do is just get off of his X guard and just make it ineffective for him and then force him to play from another position. So see how I get him to play butterfly. Still haven't broken the collar grip, which is a big problem for a lot of newer students, I think, because they don't just realize how important it is to really break the grips quick and effectively. A lot of times all it does is just force him to reset his attack, but a lot of time that's all you need to get yourself out of trouble and to try to get into an offensive cycle. You can notice every time I try to get close, he's just able to push me away. Now he locks me in close guard. Immediately I'm gonna stand up see how wide my legs are as I start to push his knee and I'm trying to all I'm trying to do is open his guard here you do not want to stay in closed guard there's not anything you can do offensively so I'm using my right hand to push his knee he starts to try to hook under my foot but I break the guard open step back and you can tell I'm again looking to stuff his leg in between my legs I go for a quick leg drag attempt there he high legs over and I'm looking to start to put start to put pressure on again force that half guard but he gets the collar grip and every time he has that grip, I'm just not going to be able to get close enough to put any real offensive pressure on. It's worth mentioning, too, that blue belt matches are six minutes. The scoreboard here isn't visible, but I'm up two to zero. And a lot of times my strategy was to get up by two points, and then that would always give me a lot of confidence to just start attacking submissions and just be more offensive. Also, in this total division for blue belt lightweight, there was around 100 competitors. So... I have a lot better ability to pace myself now, but even back then, I think I was just more thinking like, let's get it over with, get the submission and move on to the next round. And I'm going to just pause it here because you can see how the ref is restarting us without any grips. If you rewound this, you'd see he had a collar grip. This is a passer's dream. I'm able to just jump into my grips here, get close enough that I'm almost tight enough to get chest to chest, but he's doing a good job of staying really tight and balled up and do a half guard. He goes for my pants, and that's going to take his hand away from being able to block his head, so I'm able to hug his neck, break the pants grips, and now I'm where I want to be to try to work my knee slide pass. But he works a butterfly hook in, and he lifts up, off-balances me, and then resets everything. He's playing really smart defensively. From here, you're going to see me start to work a couple Toriando attempts, throw the legs by and get a pass. I really should be pushing his knees into his chest to get that pass to work more effectively. Then some, something interesting happens here. He stands up, and we both pull guard again. He's going to get up and get the advantage point. But this is a big critical point in the match because now there's not much time left, but I'm winning 2-0, to zero and I'm on bottom. And back then I knew I had a very difficult guard to pass. So the chances of him passing my guard in two minutes or less is not very likely. So I'm really confident to start attacking now. Back then, my open guard game was a lot of double sleeve control and De La Hiva. You can see I have the double sleeves now. And now if your opponent has both of your sleeves, you're not really going to be able to get any passes going. So I'm starting to play De La Hiva with my right leg on the outside here. Maybe looking for an omoplata there. He has his elbow tight to his knee, though. He attempts to pass. I use my right foot as a cross step. And now I'm going to end up trying to shoot a triangle here, but he keeps that elbow glued to his knee, and that's going to prevent the triangle every single time. Remember, I'm winning 2-0. to zero. All the pressure is on him at this point. There's not much time left. He has to either get a pass, get a back take, get a mount. He needs to do something major offensively to get points on the board and to score and win. 
So just as the time ticks down, I'm just getting more and more confident. And it's worth noting here too that I did all of my training at my home gym in Halifax. I didn't come from a big gym like a lot of these guys do. So, you know, maybe that can give somebody confidence that you don't have to train at a major Gracie Baja school or whatever. You can just put your mind to it and do really well. Now, see how I'm shooting the deep Della Hiva hook? I shoot my left leg over, and now I'm starting to work to the back here. See how I have my left leg over his leg, and now I'm going to get up in a really good leg drag position. He turns away. Big mistake. I'm going to look to try to jump on the back. See how I'm trying to throw my left hook in? He's preventing it, keeping his knee tight to his chest, keeping his elbows tight. But instead, I'm going to switch off to a clock choke here. My hips are riding up a little tiny bit high, but we're, I can't get the hooks in. Instead, I'm going to dig into the collar and look to put a lot of pressure on with this clock choke. So I attack the clock choke with my head on the floor. I'm walking in a circle. See how my head never lifts? But the problem here is my hips. I should be trying to get my hips a lot heavier on the back of his neck. He has a hand and he's able to defend, but I go shin across the back of his head. He tries to roll, but now it's just too tight. And he got a tap. I actually have most of my matches recorded from like white belt, blue belt, some purple belt. But I thought this would just be good because it kind of just shows you like when you're starting to get good at jiu-jitsu, just focus on getting good at a couple things. Have a sweep, have a pass, have a submission, you know. You don't need to get good at everything. You can't get good at everything all at once. So when I assessed myself back then, I had a good deep half guard, I had a good kneecap pass, and I had a good ability to take backs. I didn't have a very wide game, so maybe this can help you guys. I'll do round two coming up in the future. Stay tuned. Thanks. Bye.